The Falkland Islands are one of nature's best kept secrets. Rugged mountains and pristine coastlines remain unspoilt by human hands. Allowing wildlife to thrive, including one of the world's most iconic flightless birds. These islands are one of the greatest penguin centers on Earth. But this regal retreat isn't all fun and games. Predatory seals, birds of prey, and killer whales roam the coast in search of an easy meal. Some pay a heavy price throughout this penguin paradise. Lying approximately 500 kilometers from the South American mainland, the Falklands archipelago is made up of over 700 different islands. This isolated terrain has no trees, no native land mammals or reptiles. On first appearances, the region seems devoid of life. But each summer, the islands are invaded, as over a million penguins hit the shores to reunite and create a new generation. Of the 17 species of penguin found throughout the world, around a third use the Falklands as their annual breeding site. One has even chosen the archipelago as its year-round base, creating the largest population of its kind in the world, and counting. But other creatures have also set up home here, and many rely on these flightless birds for survival. The penguin's journey from egg to sea is a series of daily battles with danger coming from outside the colony, as well as within. People have inhabited the Falkland Islands since the early 19th century, and sheep farming has always been one of the most important industries. Around half a million sheep are scattered across the archipelago. But for every walking ball of wool, there are approximately two shuffling towers of feathers. King penguins are the second largest penguin on the planet. They stand just under a meter tall and weigh around 15 kilos. Each spring, around a thousand return to this grassy patch of land on East Falkland to breed and tend their chick. While many species remain monogamous, the king penguin is one of the few to have more than one partner in its life. Courtship is all about catching the eye of a female. This male's calls attract company. The female confirms her interest, and the pair embark on a courtship walk.
The male's efforts appear to have paid off. But someone else wants in on the act. It isn't just males who fight one another over mates. King penguin ladies do battle over the boys too. <laughs> Flipper fight over, the challenger gives up leaving the couple to synchronize and cement their bond away from the crowd. King penguins lay a single egg, which is incubated between the tops of their feet and a patch of loose skin called a brood patch. It will take 54 days for the egg to hatch. Time spent rearing a king penguin chick varies between 10 and 13 months. These chicks are about a year old. They're so visually different from the grown-ups. 19th century scientists classified these youngsters as a separate woolly penguin species. Their whistles are modulated, giving individuals a unique call. Communicating hunger is crucial when entirely dependent on adults for food. Both parents share the role of caring for and feeding their chick. Regurgitated fish goes only so far so they take turns fishing. Fish and squid make up the majority of the king penguin's diet. They can travel more than 300 kilometers offshore to reach their feeding grounds. Preening is essential for keeping feathers and skin wind and waterproof. A special gland at the base of the tail excretes oil, which they spread over their bodies. Once a year, adult penguins molt. Old plumage is pushed out in patches as soon as new feathers beneath are fully grown. This way, the penguins remain warm throughout the month-long process. An earlier fishing party returns to the sound of excitement from hungry beaks. But not everyone has cause to celebrate. This youngster hasn't had a meal in weeks. He appears to have been abandoned. His parents' fate remains a mystery, but many of those who head out to sea fail to return. These king penguins are reluctant to enter the water, and with good reason. A predator is on the prowl, and penguins sit high on its menu. But one appears unaware of the threat. 
Magellanic penguins are around half the size of their regal counterparts. But to a hungry sea lion, they're still a worthwhile meal. Sea Lion Island, just south of East Falkland, is where many southern sea lions come ashore to breed. Over 5,000 have made the Falkland Islands their permanent home. Adult males grow to just under three meters in length and can weigh up to 350 kilos larger than their big cat namesakes. This male stands guard over his harem. Southern sea lion females are around three times smaller than their heavily maned males, the greatest size differential among all sea lion species. Many have recently given birth These pups are just a few days old, yet already weigh around 15 kilograms. Sea lion milk contains around 30% fat. It's 10 times more nutritious than cow's milk. Females still need to forage when suckling their young. Pups and their mothers can be separated for up to two days at a time. Fortunately, when hunger kicks in, any teeth will do. Just six days after giving birth, the females are ready to mate again. Young males keen to start families of their own patrol the breeding colonies. Seeing one of the bulls otherwise engaged, the outsider makes his move. His mission is short-lived. Adolescent intruders are seen as a threat by all the breeding colony bulls. This youngster is no match for one, let alone two sea lion heavyweights. Sea lions patrol the entire coast of the Falklands. Even the most remote islands receive year-round visits. New Island is one of the most westerly points on the archipelago. At approximately 13 kilometers long by half a kilometer wide, the island is outlined by 85 kilometers of sandy beach and sheer cliff coastline. It's the perfect home for the Falklands' only permanent penguin resident. Gentoo penguins stand approximately 75 centimeters tall, making them the third largest species. Although they receive just a bronze medal for height, when water is thrown into the mix, these penguins achieve gold. Reaching speeds of up to 40 kilometers an hour, Gentoos are the fastest swimming birds in the world.
torpedo-like bodies and flattened flippers enable them to fly underwater. Lobster krill makes up the majority of the gentoo's diet. Unlike king penguins, gentoos raise two chicks at a time. Having two mouths to feed not only doubles the parents' fishing duties, it creates another problem. Three-week-old chicks constantly beg for food. So knowing which was fed last and which is hungriest is anyone's guess. But the Gentoo parents have a unique trick up their sleeves, a game called Chick Chase. This athletic challenge ensures meals are shared equally between the pair. The quickest and most persistent youngster is usually the most needy. No guesses as to who got fed first last time. Not all members of the colony are capable of raising chicks yet. Gentoos can't reproduce until they're two years old. Even so, nest building is a skill worth practicing. As is getting to know the dangers of colony life. The striated caracara is a member of the falcon family and one of the world's most intelligent birds of prey. It has a wingspan over a meter in length and is a swift aerial predator. But it chooses to spend a great deal of time on the ground. Caracaras are able to walk and run more efficiently than other raptors as their talons are flatter in shape. Although primarily scavengers, they'll attempt to seize unguarded penguin chicks and abandoned eggs. Cracking this shell proves harder than it looks, especially with beak and claws more tuned to tearing flesh. But another avian predator shows how it should be done. Falkland skewers are a subspecies of the brown skewer. Weighing up to two kilograms, they're the heaviest of all skewer species and one of the island's most fearless birds. Gentoo eggs are a delicacy, so many skewers choose to nest close to penguin breeding sites. The midday summer sun approaches 25 degrees, 
and takes its toll on the Gentoo chicks. Thick layers of insulating fat and fur may protect them at sea, but can have the opposite effect on dry land. Heat stroke is an invisible killer. Panting helps regulate body temperature to some degree. As does exposing their feet, the only parts not covered with feathers. But sometimes this still isn't enough. Caracaras are quick to capitalize on the sick and defenseless. The youngsters' parents do all they can to fend off the assault. As others join the attack, their efforts are in vain. The day starts early for all Falkland Island penguins. Gentoo parents make their way to the beach. Their chicks have become more demanding, so both adults make daily fishing trips. Back at the colony, the youngsters deter predators by huddling together, an act known as creshing. The safety in numbers approach also applies at the water's edge. The sea lion tries to surprise them, but fails, causing confusion as the gentoos scatter. But this amphibious mammal is a persistent hunter, especially in shallow water. The gentoo group re-approach the water's edge. The coast looks clear. The sea lion, however, lies in wait. He launches his ambush. The penguins rapidly change direction to try and lose their pursuer. But one gentoo gets separated from the pack. It's only male southern sea lions that seem to kill penguins. They can take up to six birds in a single hunting session. The most numerous penguin on the Falklands also happens to be the island's smallest. Over 600,000 rockhoppers nest here. Some breeding sites are so large, they can contain more than 100,000 nests.
Despite standing just 50 centimeters tall, rockhoppers are possibly the toughest penguins on the planet. Rugged cliffs and crashing waves are a welcome sight to this fearless forager. Touching down on New Ireland's windswept rocky coast is the easy part of this penguin's daily trial. Scaling the 100 meter high cliff to reach the breeding colony is the real challenge. Unlike most other penguins that waddle or belly slide, rock hoppers make short jumps to get around. They're excellent climbers. Webbed feet and sharp claws offer grip when negotiating steeper sections. Grooves worn into the rocks reveal this same route has been used for thousands of years. <laughs> Choosing such a challenging course to reach their breeding sites does have its benefits. Predatory seals would struggle to follow. However, one colony of rockhoppers has chosen a path a little more challenging than most. Falkland fur seals can reach two meters in length and weigh more than 150 kilograms, 50 times heavier than a rockhopper. Over 5,000 inhabit this rocky bay. Like sea lions, they can run on all four flippers and have visible ears. However, fur seals have an extra pair of crushing teeth. It appears these rock hoppers are asking for trouble. But not everything is quite as it seems. Rock hoppers have been sharing this cove with fur seals for decades. However, running this particular gauntlet still takes courage and a great deal of skill. Elsewhere, fur seals are known to attack and kill penguins. But this colony appears happy enough with just a fishy diet. Clumps of tussock grass crown the cliffs. The rock hoppers meander through the maze of tunnels created by these two metre tall plants. Finally, they reach the colony. For every square metre of ground, there can be up to three pairs of rock hoppers. Raising a chick in such close proximity to the neighbours is a recipe for trouble. Competition for a mating partner can be fierce.
static displays are used to mark territory as well as warn others away. Partners perform the act in unison to help strengthen their bond. Not only do they return to the same breeding location each year, they return to the exact same nest. Like Gentoo penguins, rockhoppers lay two eggs. However, the first egg is smaller than the second and is also last to hatch. The smaller chick rarely survives and the parents usually end up raising just the one fledgling. Rockhopper chicks have no choice but to grow up fast. Even finding their way to the safety of a crash is fraught with danger. But the real peril lies just outside the group. At this time of year, red-backed buzzards also have young mouths to feed. Not all flying birds pose a threat to the rockhoppers. Some have even become nesting neighbors. Black-browed albatross are one of the most graceful birds on the planet. With a wingspan of up to two and a half meters, they glide effortlessly above the oceans, returning to land just once a year in order to breed. Seventy percent of the world's population nests on these islands, and the reason lies just offshore. Cold currents off New Island's west coast support some of the richest fishing grounds in the world. Black-browed albatross join rockhoppers in dense colonies on the cliff sides. Some contain over 300,000 birds. Each summer, parents devote all their time to raising a single chick. They reuse the same pot-shaped nests each year. The parents' regurgitated fishy oils are so rich, they have a calorific value similar to that of diesel fuel. The chicks can put on a kilo in weight in just over a week. Black-browed albatross mate for life and can live for over 50 years. They don't breed until they're about 10 years old but from the age of two, they practice the courtship rituals that will one day woo their future lifelong partner. Albatross performs some of the most elaborate mating displays in the animal world. Rockhoppers also share their colonies with another flighted, yet not so graceful, neighbor. King cormorants nest just a pecking distance away. Their hooked beaks pack a powerful pinch. They also come in handy whenever a neighbor's back is turned. Stealing nest material is a constant crime in Cormorant society. <laughs> On 
like albatross and rockhoppers, cormorants often have three mouths to feed. The constant pestering for food can become too much, giving parents no choice but to turn the other cheek. The Falkland Islands' deep, rich oceanic waters not only provide the perfect habitat for penguins, they're also the playground for some of our planet's greatest mammals. But it hasn't all been plain sailing for these aquatic giants. About a century ago, whales around the Falklands were seen as a marine resource. They were harvested for their oil. Fortunately, no whale species was completely wiped out before the industry here collapsed. Rusty boilers and abandoned beds on New Ireland are all that remains of the Falklands' only whaling venture. Around the same time, penguins here also fell foul of human hands. Boiling vessels, known as tripods, still litter many of the island's beaches. Rockhopper oil was high in demand as fuel for lamps and for tanning leather. Millions of birds were captured and rendered down. Each penguin produced approximately half a litre of oil. Today, laws protect all 17 species of penguin throughout the world. One location where penguins were once persecuted has now become a rockhopper retreat. Lying to the north, Saunders Island is the fourth largest of the Falcons archipelago. Rolling hills and gently sloping cliffs appear more welcoming to the region's rock-climbing residents. And to top it off, the island provides a penguin pampering service like no other. Fed by a natural spring, this freshwater shower allows the rockhoppers to wash away salt and dirt from their feathers. Splashing and drinking the cool, clean water is part of the daily ritual for many of the island's residents. Waiting in turn by joining the queue quells most penguin politics. However, exceeding your time slot is against bathing etiquette. Freshwater springs aren't the only natural resource on the Falkland Islands. Peat consists of partially decayed plant matter and covers around 85% of the archipelago. The layer beneath tussock grass can be up to 10 meters deep. Peat is often seen as the earliest stage in the formation of coal. It's been the fuel of choice ever since people set up home here around 200 years ago. Once cut, each 20 centimeter square block is left to dry for a whole year before being used. The heat from a kilo of peat equals that of around half a kilo of coal when burnt. 
Many islanders still rely on this vast and free resource to fuel their fires and cooking stoves. On remote islands, many inhabitants have no choice but to be partly self-sufficient. Each year, around 2,000 Gentoo penguin eggs are taken and used for food. Special licenses allow islanders to collect a strictly limited number for personal consumption. Gentoos are one of the few penguins known to lay a repeat clutch should the first one fail. So theirs are the most common eggs to be taken. The Falklands landscape is sculpted by the harsh polar climate of the last ice age, which ended around 10,000 years ago. The repeated deep freeze and relentless icy winds left a series of dramatic geological features that litter many of the island's hills. Known as stone runs, these unique rivers of rock can flow up to four kilometers long and be 400 meters wide. The features are made up of fragmented quartzite blocks, ranging between two and five meters across. Broken up by the freeze-thaw cycle, the smaller boulders slowly shifted downhill as the ground thawed and slid over the deeper layer of permafrost. The stone runs intrigued the naturalist Charles Darwin, who visited the Falklands in 1833. He speculated they were created by earthquakes, a notion we now know to be a little wider the mark. However, Darwin was about to embark on a much larger theory. Two years before setting foot on the Galapagos, he saw one of his first examples of adaptive evolution in the Falkland Islands steamer dock. This heavily built bird stands around 25 centimeters tall and weighs approximately four and a half kilos. It's one of the largest ducks in the world. Short stubby wings give the impression this bird would struggle to fly. But this duck doesn't struggle because it doesn't even try. The flightless steamer duck stopped taking to the air several thousand years ago. Instead, it's become expert at swimming, using its wings and feet to race across water, much like a paddle steamer. The steamer duck's coastal habitat is hospitable all year round, making migration unnecessary. Not needing to fly offers several benefits. Decreased feather wear limits the high energy costs of molting. Reduced wing size and a bigger body assist diving. And larger birds use less energy when regulating their body temperature. Evolutionary traits the penguins worked out several million years ago. Penguins are masters at adapting to their environment. And one Falkland Island resident has literally set up home here. Magellanic penguins stand approximately 70 centimeters tall and weigh around six kilos. For six months of the year, they live, sleep and eat on the waves, clocking up over 15,000 kilometers before reuniting with the same breeding partner on dry land. Magellanic penguins are one of the most faithful species in the animal kingdom. One recently recorded relationship spans 16 years and counting. 
Unlike all the island's other penguins that choose to nest in vast open colonies, Magellanics prefer a little more privacy. They raise their chicks out of sight and underground. Of all the penguin species inhabiting the Falklands, Magellanics are the only ones that nest in burrows. The island's soft, peat-based soil is easily tunnelled, creating a safe hideaway from predators. Parents defend their bunkers with great vigour. Territorial disputes are common in Magellanic society. Donkey-like braves are also used in courtship as well as in conflict. These calls have earned this penguin another name, the jackass. Magellanics are widespread on the Falklands and breed across the entire archipelago. On Sea Lion Island, one group living among the tussock grass faces a number of obstacles on their early morning fishing trips. Unlike rock hoppers, Magellanic penguins prefer to run and belly slide. For some, negotiating even a small jump proves challenging. Support and encouragement from another member of the group eventually pays off. But overcoming the next hurdle may not be so easy. Southern elephant seals are the largest of all seals. Males can reach over six meters in length and weigh more than four tons as heavy as three family cars. They are the world's largest amphibious mammal. Elephant seals get their name from the male's trunk-like snout. These inflatable protrusions help resonate their roars, which can be heard over a kilometer away. They spend up to 10 months of the year out at sea, only coming ashore to breed and shed their skins. These young males will spend the next few weeks on land while they molt. With so much time on their hands, they prepare for the day when they'll be ready to breed. Sparring develops the fighting skills these young adults will need when competing with the dominant bulls. Fortunately for the Magellanics, elephant seals don't eat penguins. They prefer a diet of fish and mollusks. However, there's another predator stalking these shores they need to keep an eye on. And so do the seals. Killer whales patrolling the Falklands aren't fussy eaters and will take penguins. But when the elephant seals paddle ashore, the world's largest predator of mammals has a much bigger meal in mind.
for the Magellanics. Another morning's fishing mission continues. The Falkland Islands are a penguin paradise. Pristine coastlines and food-rich seas support a whole host of species that in turn helps fuel the lives of others. Not all survive to support the next generation, but these losses are few compared to those that do. For the Falklands' flightless foragers, life couldn't get much better. Oh, oh, oh. 